Hi, and welcome to the Otana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. Thanks for joining us on this Monday, September 11th of 2017. I'm Pete Connor, your host, and we do remember 16 years ago that very, very awful thing that happened out in New York City, and we just kind of keep that in our, in our, our thoughts today. Well, today we're going to visit with the Trash Queen. <laughs> the former trash queen. I don't know if they even have a trash queen anymore at Steele County, but Mary Overly Olson is going to be with us, certainly not to talk about uh, recyclables and, and such, but to talk about AAUW's upcoming Taste of Steele County. And then we're going to go on location to the Otana Public Library for a report on good books for fall reading. So before we get to all of that, we're going to talk a little bit about what you like to see on Otana today. We like to put shows out that are meaningful to you, so if you have someone who you think needs some recognition or if you have an event that needs some publicity, why don't you let us know by giving us an email at owatanatoday.charter.net charter or by giving Leanne Alt, our producer, a call at 390-5751. And now we're going to take a minute for some commercial messages, and then we're going to be right back with Mary, so please stay with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back to the Oatan Today Show, your community connection, and a hearty welcome to Mary Overly Olson. Thank you. Nice to nice be here. Nice to be with you again. You know, I was thinking as we were waiting for all of that to, 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 to be finished, is that the, the last time I would have, and I think there was a time when I did an interview with you, and you came all decked out with alum, aluminum scrap, you know. <laughs> That's right. Attached to whatever. I, I performed the Trash Queen rap. 687 times really? over my 22-year tenure <laughs> with the county. And I'm happy to say I can no longer do that because my cape and crown have been given to the Steele County Historical Society. Well, wow, how nice And is that? part of the signing over says I won't take it back. So yeah. that's... Yeah, yeah. Better, it's, better though, and I get the legacy, and I think that's a wonderful thing because you will be in perpetuity remembered. <laughs> but, you know, the fact that we have this thing that you started so many years ago. In fact, the Boy Scouts even before. Yes. You know, that it still goes. Yes. And so how important that is. And so many people participate now. Yeah. It's great to yeah. see. I, I enjoy seeing... Uh, single family homes with two two carts out yeah. in front because yeah. they recycle so much. Right. And I'm amazed each two week time period that just two of us in our household, we fill a That's cart right. every two weeks. Yeah. We could do a show on that and talk about, you know, the, on the tonnage of that yeah, stuff that goes. Yeah. But that's not why we're here. That's not why we're, we're here. We're going to talk about AAUW first, right. American Association, Association of University Women. Yeah. It's an organization, national organization, that was founded in the 1880s, and it is open to any woman with at least a two-year uh, higher education degree. Yeah. Uh, many of us have four-year degrees, yeah. but that's not necessary. Yeah. Um, we support women and girls in education, and uh, the national organization does lots of studies on uh, women and wages, uh, women in all facets of life that we can use to um, pursue equity in mm -hmm. all areas mm -hmm. for women and girls. Since 1880. Since, it, so I think it's about 1886. I don't know yeah. the exact date. The conversation has been on the table a for time, a long time. A long time. Uh, yeah. A long time. And, you know, we've made great strides as women, but we still aren't on mm. parity with men. Even white women now um, earn 79% uh, of the wages of mm. males. Even college-educated women coming out now mm. are finding that. Yeah. And so that's just one the of proverbial the proverbial glass ceiling that's exists. That's right. It does. Yeah. It does. But I want to talk about what Let's we're doing about, about it. Yeah. How many, first, before, how many members do you have? Our here? local chapter has uh, roughly 60 women okay. in it. Um, we not only support the event that we'll talk about in a moment, mm -hmm. that's our one and only phone fundraiser, but we also provide monthly programs uh, uh, September through May mm -hmm. for our members um, just to learn about various aspects of our community and our nation and mm -hmm. uh, timely topics. 
Um, our most fun uh, meeting uh, for most people is our mystery tour, which mm. we always have in October. And except for the car, the drivers, we don't know where we're going. We meet at a certain place at a certain time, and we usually have lunch somewhere, so you bring some money. Yeah. And then you tour someplace and have a meal. Oh, nice. So yeah. it's yeah, that's very fun. Yeah. But we have um, thought-provoking um, programs mm -hmm. virtually every month. Most of them are open to the public. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are at the Owatonna Public Library. By the way, I want to mention now and um, hopefully at the end of the interview, if you want to find out more about AAUW here mm -hmm. in Owatonna, mm -hmm. um, we want you to go to the website, which is owatonna-mn.aaw.net. So a lot of the things that we're talking about today are also on that website. Lots more information. Good, good, good stuff. And uh, and uh, now this taste thing. I, I was like, you know, someone had said, "Would you like that?" I said, "Is it food?" And I and they said, "Yes." Is then it, I'm on it. Yep, if it's it is food. I'm on it. It's it is. Um, the event this year will be on Thursday, September 21st, so a week from Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Owatonna Eagles. Mm -hmm. um, we This is the 8th annual AAUW Taste of Steel County, and I, I want to call out the 11 vendors who are providing food mm -hmm. for this. They are all local businesses, and we could not hold this event without they're generously donating mm -hmm. their time and their food sure. to for this event. So it's one that you, you get to eat, and have fun and support a good cause, scholarships for women and girls. Cool. So, the vendors. Yes. Tori's Restaurant and Bar here in Owatonna. Steve's Meat Market in Ellendale. Can you stop there? Yeah. Because of Steve's being out of Ellendale, is is this a county-wide organization? Definitely okay. county-wide. County right. All right, very good. Um, there is a there's a chapter in Blooming Prairie, but mm. um, you know we su we support women and girls countywide. The mm -hmm. event is countywide. Um, bakery in Blooming Prairie is another vendor. Mm -hmm. um, El Tequila Mexican Restaurant, the south side of Owatonna. Mizuki Fusion, our Japanese restaurant. Spare Time Entertainment, the bowling alley. Costas Candies. Fairway Foods is a participant. The Owatonna Eagles Club, the Owatonna Elks Club provide samples. And finally, Central Park Coffee combined with uh, Perfect Day Cakes for our 11th vendor. Mm -hmm. So they all provide taste. I call it taste, not, not a feast. Mm. But frankly, I have yet to visit all 11 vendors. I usually have so much food mm -hmm. that I don't need to visit all the vendors before I'm full. <laughs> so. so come hungry. Come hungry, come hungry, and come at come at five. Mm -hmm. um, seats uh, fill up fast. We are limited to three hundred people, and we also have a silent auction, so that mm. earns money as well. Yeah. Going into the, to the purpose, the purpose of this is to provide scholarships for women and girls to um, for educational pursuits. Um, in twenty sixteen, the proceeds from our our taste mm -hmm. provided over five thousand dollars scholarship of scholarships to eight women and girls of Steele County. Um, there are several scholarships for college women and girls. Um, Owatonna scholarship. Um, we gave a thousand dollars to Courtney Lynch, who's mm -hmm. Um, entering a master's program to become a physician assistant. My next door, two door down neighbor. Oh, all right. Yeah. Congratulations to her. Yeah, really. Our Audrey ha Hamill scholarship um, is to students pursuing English or a foreign language. <clears throat> Our 2017 win winner, a $500 scholarship to Jordan uh, Wickman. She's attending the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire. She's a junior. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, majoring in a special education with a focus on American Sign Language. Mm. Um, other scholarships, I gotta look at my notes here. Uh, Rachel Carson Scholarship, mm. near and dear to my heart, someone pursuing sure. um, education in some, something connected with the environmental mm -hmm. field, science, math. Um, our 2017 win winner, Kelly Neubauer is a senior at Gustavus Adolphus. She received $1,000, and she's um, pursuing a major in physics with an environmental uh, concentration. Mm -hmm. uh, June A. and Melanie Nelson Scholarship mm -hmm. is uh, open to women in all fields, but with a special emphasis on STEAM, which is science, technology, um, electronics, arts, and math. Mm -hmm. And uh, this past year, uh, Jackie Wareheim's a junior at the University of Minnesota. She received a $1,000 scholarship um, focusing on 
um, improving the environment through product design. Mm. Uh, we gave a Riverland scholarship, two Riverland scholarships this past year. These are $800 scholarships. Uh, Joycelyn Swenson majored in accounting and is going to pursue a four-year degree now. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey Wright also received $800. Her major is criminal justice, mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement. Cool. Then we have scholarships for junior high girls, six, seven, middle school, mm. sixth, seventh, and eighth grade girls, $350 scholarships for camperships mm. uh, in the STEM field. Mm. And they can be day camps or they can be overnight camps. We've got mm. a um, wide selection of camps that girls can, pers uh, can apply for. Sure. Um, but we're open to other ones as well, as long as they fit in that. Mm -hmm. And let me see if I come up with their names. Uh, where was my, okay, um, Amelia Shives, Shives is, uh, attended Wolf Ridge Environmental Learning Center. That was a, a week-long overnight camp in Finland, Minnesota. And Elizabeth Resner um, uh, did a day camp. It's called the Works Interactive Children Museum. It's um, for girls to pursue design and technology kinds of things. <laughs> Uh, finally, we offer a scholarship to a woman attending a national leadership conference uh, for college women student leaders. Nick Whistle is mm. the abbreviation. Mm. Um, and uh, let's see, Margaret Sager is our winner this past year. She went yeah. to Washington, D.C. Mm. for cool. that. Cool, cool. So. Well, boy, full, full things that full you're going to be doing. Uh, $15, by the way. $15 the ticket, right? for adults, $10 okay. for children. And uh, look at the website for more information. That's oatana-mn.aauw.net. Perfect. And uh, best wishes for a good turnout. Thank you. Yeah. We hope so. We All hope right. to sell all 300 tickets. Call me if you right. need a ticket or stop at Kotke's or talk to another member. Perfect. And thanks for being here to thank share you. all of that. It was a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in that 10 minutes. So, and thank you for being with us today as well. Uh, we're going to take a short break for some commercial messages, and then we'll be right back to go to the public library, so stay tuned. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. Recreational fires are allowed within the Owatonna city limits. They must be contained within a fire pit or a device designed for such use and can be three feet in diameter and no more than three feet high. They must be 25 feet from a building or combustibles. Only untreated or unpainted woods must be used. Fires must be attended by a person at all times that are capable of extinguishing the fire. This has been a safe tip from the Owatonna Fire Department. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Owatonna Foundation. Your generosity has made Owatonna a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Owatonna Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. At Triumph Graphics, we think beyond ink. That's why you should make us your source for creative concept, design, print, mail, and web. Check us out today at triumphgraphics.com. you can talk to we're growing with you with you in mind in everything we do oh a ton of public utilities Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, Your Community Connection. We are here at the Owatonna Public Library and we are with Bonnie Krieger. And Bonnie, it's that time of the year, well, okay, fall, but it's time to start thinking of some fall reads. The weather's getting a little cooler and the nights are getting a little, or the days are getting a little bit shorter, nights are getting a little bit longer. So we thought it would be a good time to um, kind of brush up on any reading that you may or may not have gotten done over the <laughs> summer. <laughs> so welcome back. Oh, thank you. Thanks to ha for having me and for being here to do this. Oh, you bet. So what do you have in store for us today? Well, these are all fairly new books that just came out. So um, they're uh, 
your theme was fall into reading. Well, I say mystery, suspense, and thrillers and whodunits mm. are popular regardless of the season. Oh, yes, absolutely. Know. And so people will recognize these authors. The first one I have is Lisa Scottolini, and her newest is Exposed. Um, her uh, duo of Rosada and uh, D'Annunzio are in this novel again. But what sets it apart this time is that the partners face off against each other about taking on a new client who wants to sue one of their existing clients. <laughs> and is oh, this boy. a conflict of interest <laughs> or not? Um, well, while this battle is ensuing internally, a murder occurs, and the two are forced to team up to find out who the murderer is and it may even become the next targets. Ooh, okay. So your job is to find out what okay. happens. And Lisa Scottolini is a, is a well-known. She's well-known and uh, easy read and uh, good following. Good following, okay. Yeah. And then, of course, James Patterson. We have books by him all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, who did he team up with this time? And it's Richard DeLalo. And this one is called The Store. And in this one, two New York writers go undercover to expose the secrets of a powerful retailer. <laughs> However, the store is always watching with drones hovering overhead. Oh, okay. That's that new thing in our lives, you know. Mm -hmm, that's right. So what will they do after the story is out? Where will they run? Where can they hide? <laughs> All right. So explain the collaboration. James Patterson collaborates with other he, yes, most, authors? Yes. And almost every series or, um, that he has, you'll see a, a co-author with him. Mm. I, maybe okay. that's why he can write so many books. Yeah, how many does he pump out a year? Uh, <laughs> Quite it a seems few. like one every six weeks. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, busy man. Okay. <laughs> Another one that's been gaining in popularity is Louise Penny. Uh, she's actually a Canadian author mm. of mm -hmm. mystery novels. They're set in the province of Quebec. And uh, her uh, protagonist is Chief Inspector Armand Gamache. And uh, Glass Houses is the 13th in the series. It takes readers to the fictional um, Canadian village of Three Pines, mm, where a okay. mysterious figure appears on the village green and trouble follows. Oh, okay. So, sort of like it's their own Lake Wobegon. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> they, all three of those sound like really good reads. And um, several years ago, you may have remembered the name of Vince Flynn. Uh, he was a Minnesota writer. He passed away in 2013 from cancer, unfortunately. Mm, okay, um, I, do, I do recall that, yes. Okay, and um, his character was Mitch Rapp, who was a very rogue CIA kind of guy. And um, he, he wrote 14 books before he passed. And then he had some in the works, and somehow Kyle Mills was designated to kind of take over his character. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure if this book is all Kyle Mills's work rather than anything he found in in Vince's notes or okay. before passing. Okay. Um, and so this one I is called Enemy of the State. Okay. And uh, Mitch is given a dangerous mission by the president himself. Find out which high-level Saudis are involved in funneling my money to ISIS and kill them. The catch? Rap will get no support from the United States in this endeavor. Rap therefore makes a decision that will change his life forever. He quits the CIA to avoid involving his men in something illegal mm. and decides to assemble a group of independent assassins to complete the mission. Will he survive it? Mm -hmm. and okay. with, so. Oh, so it's quite contemporary then in theme. Yes, yes, very much so. Okay. And the first 13 were as well. And, uh, but now that he's going off of the CIA, I'm just not sure not how it's sure going to go. Not sure how it's going to work out. Okay. So, so for you Vince Flint fans, here's, you know, try right. this one out and see right. how it stacks up to the, right. the other books. Uh, I'm working. not guaranteeing anything. I haven't mm -hmm. read it yet. Okay. But, um, some people like it when the character continues. Some are disappointed. So ah, you have to make your okay. own decision. All right. And then another Minnesota author is William Kent Kruger. 
and we constantly ask, hasn't he had a new one? Hasn't he had a new one? Oh. Well, oh. he has a new one, and this is a Clark O'Connor uh, book. Um, it's usually set up in the northern Minnesota uh, Boundary Waters area. This one is a little different in that he's traveling to Arizona during July with his new wife and they're seeking information about the son, her son, who vanished while confessing to a killing in a voicemail. Um, they step into more than they bargained for. And the title of the book is Sulphur Springs because that's where it is in Arizona. Mm. So I don't know if it's going to lose any of its flavor since it's not sent in, no in northern Minnesota. But if you like Cork O'Connor, I'm sure you'll try mm, it. You'll try it, okay. So. All right. So then I have to move on to a few uh, nonfiction okay. books. Yep, those are always good. And um, you probably are familiar with the Property Brothers if you watch any HGTV. Oh, absolutely. Those yes. cute identical <laughs> twins. <laughs> and Drew. Yes, and they wrote this, and it's called, subtitled, Our Story, and uh, it just follows their lives, and you learn, you know, the twists and turns that they've gone through to become so, uh, neither one of them planned on this being their, their dream job. Really? Um, but um, there were twists and turns and highs and lows, and this is how it's come out so far, and uh, you'll hear their family stories and other things. Oh, so. that would be absolutely So people fun. always like uh, memoirs and, and mm -hmm. biographies, autobiographies. So And also to follow people's stories about you started from here and you ended up over here and how did all of that happen? And they truly are delightful on, yes. on oh, yes. HGTV. Yes. I, I yes. enjoy them a lot. Okay. Uh, Renee just gave me this one. She's read it and recommends it. Um, American Fire by Monica Hess. It's a story of love, arson, and life in a vanishing land. Um, in 2012-13, over the course of five months, some 86 fires were set in Acomic County in Virginia. Uh, the arsonist turned out to be Charlie Smith, a local and former volunteer firefighter and his girlfriend. Hmm. Um, however, the author, who was a journalist, found there was uh, much more to the story than just someone wanting to go out and burn things. Um, at one time, this county was one of the uh, most affluent, richest in the country, mm -hmm. and it's very depressed now, and there's reasons behind his burning oh. of these buildings, and um, so it's, uh, Renee highly recommends it. A true life mystery mm -hmm. kind of thing right you know? wow so um i hadn't heard about the situation but i think it's worth it if you're interested mm -hmm. in those things oh definitely definitely so now we have oh some holidays yeah i know, I know. it's only september it's but i have to, to to show you that we are getting a couple new things in which we try every year mm -hmm. you know if you're into making your gifts it's not too soon to start and this one's called 100 Little Gifts to Make. <laughs> um, it covers a lot of different crafts, so if you aren't good at one, you might be able to mm -hmm. at the other. Um, stitching, paper craft, knitting, jewelry, crochet, sugar oh craft. And they are just cute little uh, projects. Uh, I don't oh, think they take a lot of time colorful. or money. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, uh, nice to give. Oh, definitely. A homemade gift, I think, is the best made gift. Right. Tell you the truth. Oh, some really, really cute things in yeah. there as you thumb And, you know, the there's pages. a few things there for the fall as well as Christmas. So, And then, of course, who, who can go without cookies at Christmas? I know. And oh. um, how many bake sales are going to be coming up starting <laughs> in uh, October, November? Quite a few. Right. <laughs> and if you're maybe one that has to donate to one of these, Check out the books. Mm -hmm. We have lots and lots of ideas. Uh, maybe you just want your tried and true, but this one. Uh, some of the cookies are things that are traditional. Mm -hmm. Beautiful pictures. Oh, oh yes. Um, but I found out that looking through it, she's very, very descriptive in how to put them together to make them look that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes that's where I fall a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> Is the <it> presentation portion <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so this is just one of many, but it's just basic title called Holiday Cookies. Sure, and, and actually it's never too soon to start planning for the holidays right. because they always sneak up on us. You right, know? It's right. pretty crazy. So, so. Uh, get your recipes now. <laughs> and then regular things going on at the library, Bonnie, you said you have, there's a book club. Uh, we've had a book club that's been here for probably 15 years. 15 years, it's okay. It's called um, So Many Books, So Little Time. Mm -hmm. So uh, they meet the second Tuesday of the month. Um, and then there, we also have a poetry group that's starting to meet again in September. Uh, and we have movies on the second and fourth Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. They're very good movies, too. Yeah, right. So um, check our Facebook. There's posters in the library. Call us. It's on in the paper. Okay. and find out what's going on. All right. Well, Bonnie, thank you so much again for allowing us to come and giving us some ideas for some um, good fall reads. Thank you. And audience, please stay with us. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. Well, good to have you back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection. Some community announcements for you right now. The Steele County Historical Society announces its newest edition of History on Court. The Blair, Mur Mur huh, the Blair Murder Case will be held Thursday, September 14th at 7 p.m. at the Steele County History Center. Join them as attorneys argue the case using the evidence from 1884. The audience will deliberate and decide the case before learning the true fate of the accused. The tickets are $10 for members, $15 for non-members, and includes a beverage of your choice. Additional wine, beer, and soft uh, drinks are available for purchase. Tickets are available for purchase at the center or online at www.eventbrite.com. On Saturday, September 16, 2017, the fifth annual fundraising event for the Children Remembered Orphanage Legacy Trust will be held at the State School Orphanage Grounds, 540 West Hill Circle, Owatonna, from 2 until 5 p.m. Musical entertainment by folk musicians Curtis and Loretta, horse-drawn wagon rides around the grounds, hosted by historical uh, characters. Mush-eating competition, including local celebrities, a prize for the winner. Children's games, new, a scavenger hunt on the grounds, and also a prize for the winner. Admittance to the event is $5 for adults, $3 for students, and is free to children under five. Donations to the Legacy Trust are tax deductible, and that's gonna take care of it for today. We're gonna to have you back on Wednesday when we have Jared Hendricks from OPU, as well as an update from the Steele County Humane Society. So. Please come back for that, and in the, last, in the next couple of days, be well, and uh, thanks for being with us today. See you on Wednesday.